John Fung once told of a time when he'd been out in the forest. He was going to put up his umbrella tent. And so he looked around. He didn't see any clouds coming in. So I think it'd be a nice, clear night. So he put the tent out and way out in the open. He said he was meditating along. All of a sudden, around midnight, this huge storm blew up. He didn't know where it came from. Wind and rain. Now, the umbrella tent is not much of a tent. It's just basically an umbrella with mosquito net hanging down from it. So of course, the wind and the rain were coming in. So he took all of his robes, except for his under robe, and put them in his bowl to keep them dry, and then just sat there meditating. And the topic of his meditation was the body may be wet, but the mind's not wet. The body's wet, but the mind's not wet. He said that got him through the night. So it's the same on a cold, rainy day like this. The rain and the cold are outside. And your body, of course, is picking them up, but the mind doesn't have to pick them up. The mind can stay with the breath. You wrap yourself up nicely. And that's it. You, you choose where the mind is going to feed. And if it's going to be feeding on garbage, well, of course, it's going to suffer. If it's going to be feeding on pain, it's going to suffer. But you realize okay, there's a warm spot in your body. Okay, you stay with that warm spot. On hot days, you look for the cool spot. You realize there are lots of different potentials right here in the present moment, and which ones you choose to focus on are the ones you're going to be encouraging. So what do you want to encourage? Do you want to encourage pain and suffering, or do you want to encourage a sense of well-being? Because if you're coming from pain and suffering, it's very likely that you'll start doing things and saying things and think things that are really not in your own best interest or anybody's best interest. Or if you're coming from a sense of inner well-being, that even though things outside may be difficult, you're coming from a position of strength, and you're much more likely to be able to do and say and think the right thing. So look after your sense of well-being here, because it's a gift not only to you, but to the people around you. Just in the same way that when you're kind to other people, it's good for your meditation. We all know that passage about the acrobat, where the two acrobats each have to look after their own sense of balance to protect the other person's sense of balance. But there's the other side to that story as well. As the Buddha said, when you're kind to other people, you help other people. You're benefiting and developing powers of endurance. You're developing the principle of non-harming. You're developing a mind of goodwill, a mind of empathy. You benefit from these things as well. So when you meditate, it's good for other people. And when you help other people, it's good for your meditation. Try to keep these principles in mind. There's no clear line between them. Some people say Theravada is selfish and Mahayana is generous, unselfish. But from the Theravada point of view, there's no real distinction between working for your genuine, genuine well-being and working for the well-being of others. They go together. It's not a zero-sum game. So as you meditate, remember, it's good for other people too. That gives you more energy to meditate. And when you're helping other people, remember, okay, this is good for me. This is good for my mind. We'll have a lot of people coming in tonight, and so it's going to be a good chance to develop your powers of endurance. It's all part of the practice.